Hi guys, Digital Sticks here, coming to you from the Just Be Club, and I see that they've added a stripper pole. It's a must-have in VR chat. So, um, anyway, so the club's still being enhanced, uh, but I'm trying out for my first time the FSR plugin for OpenVR, and it's a really simple, it's fairly simple install. You just got to do just a little bit of paying attention to the instructions for it, and go through a process. It's not going to be a point-and-click install. You just have to Pay attention to the instructions and you download the files and you replace, you rename a file from your game directory and then place this file in there. And I'm just trying it out with the default settings. I didn't mess with the configuration, but there's another configuration file that you can update with just Notepad to, to fine tune some settings. And there's instructions on what to expect from those settings. So, anyways, again, it's not point and click download and install uh, simple but it's actually still fairly simple I would if you know how to read something and follow instructions don't sweat out what's going on don't worry about that you don't know what a DLL is or anything like that just simply follow the instructions and you can do this you can try this out on your own install and there's other YouTube videos with the tutorial but really it's not even worth a tutorial it's really straightforward uh, just you'll find the github page uh, I may get around to linking to it, um, but you can also, another way to get this is just to simply Google uh, OpenVR space FSR, and it should bring you to the, the GitHub pages where you want to get the latest version, which is currently 1.1. And anyways, what this does is it gives you the AMD Open FSR support, or the o AMD, op AMD FSR support, in any Steam VR game that uses OpenVR, which is the majority of them, it just may not be some of the newest ones that are using OpenXR. Uh, that that could come later. And the reason this is made available is somebody created this mod because FSR is open source, and so they were able to add it. And by modding uh, Steam VR, the OpenVR a API, they actually basically applied FSR to every uh, for al to almost every Steam VR game, and FSR is a super sample. Uh, how do I explain it? It's like you know, it's, it's, it's people call it AMD's uh, answer to DSL or DLSS, um, and it's it is sort of, but I don't think it was meant to be considered a one point one to one uh, competitor. It's just simply. Uh, but it is a, I don't, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure how to describe it, but it's it's basically something that can help you uh, upscale some of your resolutions and images, and it gives you the chance to have higher frame rates or and or higher resolutions, or the appearance of higher resolutions than you could have had. So here in the Just B Club, I'm trying it out. Now that I'm recording, I'm getting different numbers with this extra camera being open and everything. I'm, I've put an extra load on the computer, so I'm not getting the same numbers I was being impressed with at first, but certainly in the home world, in my home world, when I switched to 144 frames per second with my index, I was getting 144 frames per second. Uh, in here on 120 frames per second settings, I was reprojecting for the most part. Um, so now I've switched and I'm, I'm on 144 hertz and a good, a good percentage of time even while recording in this world with quite a bit going on, I'm getting, uh, I'm hitting the 72 frames. And every now and then it's dropping to, uh, I see it hit 50 something, just, just briefly. Now there's not a lot of people in here right now. So, you know, there's definitely more demanding situations to be in, but this is impressive for recording and being in this world, period. Um, now, by using the 144 hertz setting with my index, that's where my reprojections are at 72. But I've experimented, and I can do it again now. And if I go to 80, then uh, see, and this is this is just something I was talking about on the index: the fact that you can change these res these uh, refresh rates and everything, and the resolution too on the fly. Uh, if I go to 80 hertz. I'm still mostly reprojecting at 40 um, every now and then just bumping up to 80. But see, that's not better. That's actually 
So it's not trying as hard, um, and yet the results, my actual experience in frame rates is lower. Now if I go to, so since I can't hit 80, then I know I can't hit 90. I know I can't hit 120. And so that means uh, my fastest frame rate in this world with FSR is going to be setting up to 144 and getting 72. But 72 is pretty phenomenal. I'm doing this with a 1080 Ti while recording with OBS while using the stream camera. So I've got two views being generated inside VRChat and while in a, in a pretty a reasonably demanding world. I mean, this world is, for what this world offers, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's poorly optimized, but it's, it's got a lot going on. And to get these kind of frames in here, that's, that's definitely an improvement. Sorry, this isn't any kind of scientific uh, benchmark to benchmark comparison, but this FSR is free and it's gonna help enhance. If you're, if you're on a VR capable PC and you're already coming through, you know, even if it's the VR capable potato, uh, you're going to get improvement using this mod and it's not any kind of mod that'll get you in trouble with VR chat but you can apply it to any open VSR open VR game and I specifically tried it in VR chat because this is one of the most demanding games I play one of the games where yeah if I can get something extra out of it I care more than than other games so uh, you know this could be interesting to see I did see where some people reported better results even out of Beat Saber I've never really struggled with Beat Saber, but it might be interesting if this makes, uh, you know, I, I might have to try it again and see what 144 hertz Beat Saber feels like. Maybe I wasn't truly hitting 144 before, and I will with this. Um, so that'd be cool. But uh, yeah, so now, yeah, I'll see it drop just a couple times to the 50s, but it's going to hit 70s. So, you know, that's really good. And this is again while recording. So. Let me disable this camera. And this is what I'm looking at, just the frames as mentioned inside VRChat. So uh, someone over here, they haven't loaded for me yet. Oh wait, no they haven't. Oh. Okay, so yeah. It doesn't fix DSL speeds. That sucks. So we'll just see if one, if that avatar ever loads, we'll see if it makes a difference. But another thing is, there's not anything to installing this. There's no downsides really. Um, as long as the as long as you do uh, the recommendation and, and set a, um, <laughs> here. <laughs> there we go. As long as you follow the uh, recommendations and create a, um, oh, shoot, I don't know what this And rename the original file so that should you have any trouble whatsoever you have the option of going back see um, and you can come in and, and join join us as lollies me and my new friend here I'm about to be a new friend and uh, come into VR chat and enjoy it with with no money down no there is uh, there's no reason not to do this mod so it really doesn't you'll see people go full in with reviews and that could be interesting but really it's free it's easy to install you can download it quickly. There's nothing to it. In the time you'd spend watching a review about it, you could just simply already have it installed and be checking it out for yourself. And and you have to do the process for each game you want to uh, use with it, but it's perfectly fine. It's it's easy. Uh, so you just hunt down and it works with SteamVR, OpenVR API, and you can use it with Unity-based games and uh, Unreal Engine-based games. So. I'm going to try it out on some other things, but honestly, with my 1080 Ti and an index, I'm I'm generally happy with with my VR performance, anyways. But I'm gonna I am going to try it out in some other games. Uh, I think I think I already used the ultra settings when I play uh, Tetris Effect, even. But I'm about to do some of that to check out 
check out the uh, official release of Connected. I, I did some beta testing and, and it seemed okay, but the uh, the time frame for matchmaking for a game was was killing the experience. So I look forward to seeing how the vibe when it can stay flowing. Uh, <laughs> hey, when it can stay flowing with the uh, official release of multiplayer. Um, anyways, so gosh, this is a this is a hot mess of a video, but yeah, it seems to work. And so yeah, well, even with at least one little lolly in here, you know, this is definitely uh, definitely higher frame rates than I'm used to getting in here. Uh, 60 frames per second, 50 frames per second. That, that doesn't bother me. That's already that's good for VR chat. Um, but to bump that up even more and have some more headroom, that's really good too. Uh, one other thing I would take note of is um, okay. One other thing I would make a note of is my room here seems super hot, uh, like, and it doesn't normally feel this warm. Uh, unless I'm playing Beat Saber or some other game where I've been moving around so that the increase in temperature plus my actual physical activity makes it feel hot. So this actually just feels hot. And I have an air conditioner directly in this room that's overkill for this room. So this is with a 1080 Ti. It basically what I'm saying there is apparently uh, it is definitely going to make your GPU do all that it can so that it can do more than it could. <laughs> if you follow what I'm saying there. So... Just be aware of that. I don't think that's going to be a problem for anybody, but it's just, it's really, it's just telling it that's, it's actually getting more out of your GPU. So, um, so yeah, it, it definitely works. It definitely helps. There's really no reason not to do it. And uh, I've already been saying many times that with a, with an index and a 1080 Ti, I've still been quite happy with VR in general, including VR chat, which is, you know, so demanding for just about everybody. And so now this as an additional enhancement and option for no additional costs, I mean, it's just, it's just better. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look forward to exploring how much this changes things. And yeah, I may be even further removed from being in the GPU market anytime soon, which uh, I'm happy with that. I don't like spending money on components that I already, you know, that I already have basically a, a few a little bit higher frame rate for the same experience as I'm already used to isn't a game changer that's worth several hundred dollars to a thousand dollars or more um, so this is cool uh, this is this is what I'm seeing here just from testing this out is a jump that is the equivalent of a, a, an upgrade in a GPU, like if, if somebody was upgrading from a lower end to the high to, to the high end in the same family, uh, this would be the equivalent. Now it's a little bit a little bit different between like a 3060 and 30. You know, I can't not so much maybe with the 30 series differences, but like the 10 series, this would probably be the equivalent of having a a 10, 50, 1050 Ti or 1060. And, and going up to a 1080 or 1080 Ti. Uh, so uh, it's just a, a nice boost, uh, no cost, can't complain. And if you're struggling to find a GPU, it's something to take into consideration that it is making uh, things more playable and more enjoyable at a lower end. So you might, you might be able to hold over till things uh, smooth out better by no, knowing that this works so well. So other people probably cover this so much better as far as the technical end of it. I'm just letting you know that I finally checked it out and it does work, it's easy. Uh, you should skip the reviews to just grab it. Um, yeah, and definitely when it comes to VR, if you have a VR capable GPU, you have a GPU that can utilize this technology. So go for it. Digital Sticks, I'm out. Thank you for watching.